Hi guys, I'm Aaron Runk, and today we're going to be going over is how to use a G75 OD grooving can cycle. All right, so I have several variables that I want to look at right here. I've got my X, my Z, and then I'm going to skip down to my I and my K and my F. Those are the variables that I'm going to be covering in this video. All right, so when I am setting up my grooving, all right, I want to make sure that I'm coming to a clearance position, all right? So that clearance plane tells my insert where to start the grooving cycle at, all right? So a lot of times I want to start inside the groove, and I'll show you on the picture on the next slide what that's going to look like for my clearance point. So I want to position myself before I do the G75, and then I'm going to execute my G75. So what I'm looking at is I have my X value and the X value is the bottom diameter of that groove. So whatever my X diameter should be, that's what I'm going to put for that variable. Okay. My Z is the absolute location of the furthest peck. Okay. So that's, that's how far back my groove's going. Okay. So if my shoulder is one inch back from the face of my part, my Z would be a minus one inch, all right? So then I have my I, all right? So what my I does, if you look right here, I is how much I'm pecking each time, okay? Now it will not fully retract out of the groove. What it is, it's a chip breaking function, all right? So what that means is it's gonna peck, come up a little bit, peck, come up a little bit, so on and so forth. It's only coming up just a small amount, okay? The retraction, uh, is a very small amount that's being used, all right? So once I come down all the way and I hit my X location right here, okay, which is the bottom of my groove, I'm gonna come back up and then I'm gonna go K, okay? So my K is how far I move over to the next pecking cycle, all right? To my next groove, so to speak. So I'll come down I'll come up and then I'll move over in K and I'll do the same thing. And I'll come up, come over and do the same thing. Now notice right here, it's leaving some excess material. Okay, so I'll cover that here in just a second on how to keep that from happening. But that's exactly how that works right there. All right, so I've got my I, which is my chip breaking. All right, my K, which is how far I move over between peck cycles, all right? And then I have my feed rate, okay? So my feed rate for what we're doing right now, let's go with a feed rate of eight thousandths per revolution, okay? So let's kind of look at what we're gonna be doing. So I have a part here, okay? What we're gonna do is I have material right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pecking cycle to take, to get rid of this material right here. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this right here. <clears throat> this is on page uh, 108. So 106 was where we were at just a second ago. We're on page 108. And so this is a multiple pass. So if I have a groove that's really wide, instead of making a lot of point to point moves, I'm actually gonna use a can cycle to do the entire groove at once, all right? So the way that works is remember, I want to position myself Okay, that letter C is my clearance move, okay? So I'm gonna move above my part. So if my part is two inches, I'm gonna be two inches, 100 thousandths, okay? Okay, wrap it to the front of the part, and then it's gonna be right there in front of the part. Now notice, I'm gonna position myself, okay? Minus 750 thousandths. That is the starting point of my groove. So now that I am where I wanna be, We'll move this out of the way. I'm going to execute my G75. Okay, so my G75 will have an X. So my X is right here. Okay, it's going to be that distance right there. That's going to be one inch, seven hundred and fifty thousandths. My Z, all right, from zero to the side of the groove, okay, the very furthest point in Z is a minus one inch and a half, one inch, 500 thousandths, okay? So I have my 
diameter, I have how far back I'm going in Z, and then my I, if you notice these little dots right here are my eyes. So what that's doing is it's gonna go 50 thousandths at a time and then it's gonna break that chip. And this is using a K of 200 thousandths. Now remember the K is how far it's stepping over. So if I'm gonna step over 200 thousandths, I need to know the width of my insert. My insert needs to be 250 thousandths wide if I'm gonna be moving over 200 thousandths at a time. Same rule of thumb, if I'm using an eighth of an inch wide grooving insert, that's 125 thousandths, I'm gonna move over that 100 thousandths that we talked about, all right? That way I know that I'm not leaving any material behind my insert, okay? I make sure that I go over just enough. Now, looking at this, if you look closely, there's a difference between those two values right there. Let's get this out of the way. If you look right here, this is the K. Okay, now this last one, that's a smaller move than what the other ones were, okay? Now these other moves were 200 thousandths. So it's going over 200 thousandths. Then it's gonna go over another 200 thousandths. We'll get this negative out of here. So on this last move right here, it's only going about 100 thousandths. Now, even though I have a K of 200 thousandths, my program will not go any further than one inch 500 thousandths. That's how far I told it it can go. I'm only allowing it to go that far. So the K will compensate for that last distance and it will come over just the amount. It can come over 199 thousandths or if I have one more thousandths left to go, it will come up and come over one thousandths of an inch and it will do that cut. All right, and lastly, I have my feed rate. So I've got my G75, my X for the final diameter, my Z for how far back I'll go, my I is my chip breaking depth, okay, so my pec depth, K is my step over between grooves, and my F is for my feed rate. Now, whenever this is done, it's gonna start here, that last groove that it does, it's gonna stop right there. So it's not gonna know what to do after it gets right there. So that's when we would reposition it, or in this case, this program is sending the machine home. So if we're making this part, we're gonna to need to position myself right here, okay? This would be my X, okay? one inch 500 thousandths minus 500 thousandths my z will be a minus one inch okay so my i will move this down here try to anyway we'll move that down there my i is going to be the 50 thousandths that we talked about my k my width of my grooving insert is only 125 thousandths. So I don't want to go more than 125 thousandths. And I don't want to go exactly 125 thousandths because I'll be using the full width of the insert, all right? And some inserts will vary a little bit as they wear. So a nice safe bet will be 100 thousandths of an inch. And then I want to use a feed rate of eight thousandths, all right? So this whole line right here, G75 will come down and do passes right here. Well, this doesn't look really good, so let's open up our simulator so that you guys can see it just a little bit better on what we're trying to show you, all right? So I have my simulator right here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the program. We'll run a, a turning cycle real fast so you guys can see what it's doing. So once it runs the turning cycle, what we have next is we have our grooving. So if you look here, calls up my grooving tool. Okay, 
turns on my constant surface speed. Okay, I'm gonna position myself, okay? So I'm, I'm kinda high on here, so that's fine. But I'm moving back 700 or 800 and 75 thousandths. Now keep in mind that I wanna move to the location and I want to add the thickness of my insert to that move. So that way I know the back of my insert is where it's supposed to be. I'll kind of explain that a little bit later, all right? So, coolant's gonna come on. I position myself right here. So G75, so I'm gonna execute G75. Let's see how it comes out of PEX. So now it's gonna move over five or 50 thousandths, and then it's gonna do it again. It's gonna move over 50 thousandths, and I have a 50 thousandths PEC, and it's gonna go back one inch. Okay, so if you'll notice, these are evenly spaced, but this last one, I can't go 100 thousandths on there, okay, or 50. So if I hit tab one more time, my machine knows how far it can go, what its limitation is, and compensates on that last pass. So again, this can cycle is finished, my tool will stop right here at the end of the can cycle and then I tell it to go home so it will go home okay it's rapid remember guided lines are rapid solid lines are feed rates okay so that's exactly how I run that OD grooving cycle so doing that right there we'll put this groove right where it needs to be before we do the threading all right so the thing I was explaining before, where we have to take the thickness of our insert, is if I'm doing a groove, all right? So here's my material, and I have a groove, and there's my shoulder, okay? And here's the front of my part. If this groove right here, okay, is one inch, back okay or the, the width of this is one inch i'm sorry and this width right here is 500 thousandths from zero okay zero is z zero right here that's where i'm programming from my clear point needs to be i'll make a little insert right here this needs to be right here if i put a minus 500 thousandths there, okay? So if I position myself, we're gonna go G0, X, we'll say it's a two inch diameter, two inch, 100 thousandths, Z minus 500 thousandths. This is where my insert will go, okay? It's gonna come right here. Well, I can't do that because that's gonna violate the groove when I go to do it. All right, I need it to be right there. So if my grooving tool is 125 thousandths, I will come back okay the width of that shoulder, okay or the web, the thickness of that web plus the thickness of my threading insert. So, it will not be a minus 500 thousandths. It will be a minus 625 thousandths. That will position me correctly right there, okay? And then again, 200 thousandths above it because that's where that's at right there. It's a two inch diameter. So, I'll come over here. We'll do G75, okay? My depth will say it's gonna be one inch. So my X is one inch, that's the finished diameter. So it's a pretty deep groove, okay? So I got one inch and then my Z, okay, is gonna be a minus one inch plus a half inch. So minus one inch, 500 thousandths, okay? I have a letter I, we'll do 50 thousandths because that's what I had in my program. I have my K value, 0.100 thousandths, because remember, 
My thickness of my insert is only an eighth of an inch, so I can't go more than that. I wanna go a little bit less. And then I have my feed rate of eight thousandths per revolution, inches per revolution, that's my feed rate, all right? So if I do that, this tool will come down, it'll come up, come over, come up, come over it's going to keep doing it okay now with this being an inch it's going to come over 50 000 or 100 thousands each time so it's going to come over 10 times so it's going to go one two all the way up to 10 on that last pass it'll come down come back up and it's going to stop at one inch or at x two inches 100 thousands okay so keep in mind whenever you're running your parts Watch it in your simulation. Make sure they are feed lines, okay? Because dotted lines are going to be your rapid lines. And go through here, okay? So remember in your books, all this information, how it works. If you have any questions, come holler at me. Again, I'm Aaron Rump. Thank you for watching.